know that 4,000 villages and small towns in England have been lost over the centuries. Sounds extremely careless, I know. The common myth is that these villages were wiped out by the plague. But that simply isn't true. As we'll hear later, they were wiped out by ruthless landlords who can make more money out of sheep than peasant workers. Leicestershire was especially badly hit. But we begin with the remarkable story of Buckinghamshire's Lost River. At one stage, there were 11 water mills along the River Misbourne between Great Missenden and Denham. It even carried freight for a short distance. But this delightful stream, which means so much to the people this side of the Chilterns, can disappear as fast as it arrives. It travels a mere 15 miles through prime commuter land, but it's provoked as much debate as the Nile. Why? Because you simply can't predict its moods. This is Misborn water at its finest. Shardlow's Lake, four miles from the source. It's part of the river system. Broadly speaking, they're just down the valley, and it's spread out, and it comes in at the top, and it goes out the same at the bottom. But, and, uh, it's and it's got this lovely bit in the middle. And it's as clear as can be, isn't yes, it? It's like gin, isn't it? Yes. Is it always like this? Yes. You can drink this. Are you sure? Yeah. Look at a little whiskey. Uh. Evan's ancestors bought the lake and the land surrounding Shardlow's Hall from where the Drake family controlled most of old Amersham. Now Evan has the waters to himself. And you've had it for 35 years? That sort of order, yes. I know I don't look it, but... Uh... <laughs> no, you don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but have you had your money's worth? Oh, absolutely. It's glorious to have a have something like this to yourself on to share with friends and fellow fishermen is wonderful. The dearest old fishing friend of mine is laying under six feet of water over there. Where? Just beyond the island there. Yeah. He said, I, when I go, and he went at 92, uh -huh. old Herbert Norton, I want to be buried in Goose Island, which is what we call that pool. Mm -hmm. So we did the job properly with the vicar, sitting where I am. Yes. Prop He's an old Navy man, commander of the Navy, so it was quite appropriate. We committed him to the deep. Another ally was Fred J. Taylor, our legendary campfire chef who cooked many tasty banquets on the shores of Shardlow's. Sadly, Fred died this summer at the age of 89. He and Evan saw the lake at its worst during the drought of 1997. Hundreds of trout had to be evacuated to another lake. That's the Misborn for you, a typical chalk stream which disappears when the water table drops below the riverbed and there's nought you can do about it. What are we trying to catch this morning? Well, we'll, we'll be catching either rainbow or brown trout. That's all we've got in here. Mm. And uh, it's very interesting, actually, because the, the Miswarn is one of three rivers only in England where the rainbow breed wild. Let's reconnect with the river proper at Quarrenden, one of the 11 mills that lined its route. It's now the home of Clare and Norman Bailey, for whom the Misborn is a real joy as it rushes past, lightsome and merrily, as one of its earlier chroniclers recall. Needless to say, the Misborn wasn't always this plentiful. When we first moved in, it was uh, dry for about four years, so... Um, really? Yeah. And, um, Did you think it would ever come back? Um, no, we didn't, really, and uh, we had a toddler at the time, so it was actually quite a relief that the river wasn't flowing. Yeah. But it also it's, you know, not very nice to see a dry riverbed. Of course what we're looking at is the old mill race. The actual river Misborn used to run along this side of the house and you can see where the spindle used to hold the water wheel here and just around the corner where the water splashing from the water wheel corroded some of the brickwork. As you notice it's quite a long drive and I've often thought about putting a little sign halfway down the drive saying Welcome to Dorset. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit like that, yes. Uh, certainly when the crops are here, it is absolutely gorgeous. When He either has wheat or corn. And of course this was a corn mill, so corn would Indeed. have been grown and used here for centuries. Absolutely. Um, in fact, there's been a mill here since Doomsday. Uh, not this one. Not this one, no. <laughs> this one is actually very recent. And here's another mill on the Misborn, although you'd never guess it. It's been a woman's clothes shop for over 30 years. But you don't have to venture very far inside to find the evidence. Actually, you can hear the river before you can see it. 
Hey, look at that. It's quite a story, isn't it, that this was originally a silk mill. You're sitting by the water and hear it in the distance. Mm, absolutely. Right? And here you are selling ladies' clothes. I know, during the Napoleonic Wars it was a silk mill. And uh, it must have been a, quite a prosperous area, I think, Old Amersham in those days. And then latterly, of course, it was a corn mill. And when you bought this place and you saw that river running through it, what did you actually think? Did you think, oh my heavens, or did you think <laughs> I have wonderful? to say, I thought fabulous. I mean, it's full of character. It's a wonderful old place. Yes, it's had its traumas. Yes, we've had our odd moments when water's appeared through the wall. But essentially, it's very, very good-tempered. When did water appear through the wall? Water appeared through the wall in the mid-80s. <laughs> We, I could bore you with funny stories of lovely ladies sitting here with their shoes on the table, carrying on as if nothing happened, British spirit. Uh, but essentially it's very, very good tempered. It dried up for a short period in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. uh, but here it keeps flowing quite well. And it carries on flowing in lightsome fashion towards Chalfont St Giles. 150 years ago, this stretch of the Misbourne was used commercially. There was a factory, a small working